The NFL draft begins this Thursday in Kansas City, Missouri, and a handful of Gamecocks are hoping to hear their name called. And one of those players that hopes to see that NFL dream come true is Nate Atkins. And Nate, only part of South Carolina, the program for one year, but you certainly left your mark. I know we had the opportunity to talk after your pro day, but just remind folks, when did you truly, truly believe that playing at the next level was realistic? Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I mean, I came here thinking, you know, it might be my last year of playing football. Uh, you know, when I really realized that this might be an opportunity for myself is probably after the bowl game, uh, playing those, you know, that top competition as far as, you know, Tennessee, Clemson, and then Notre Dame, you know, three games in a row where, you know, I played pretty well, um, you know, and, uh, and, and played at a pretty high level. Um, you know, it kind of opened doors and, and, and kind of made this opportunity for myself, which has been really, really wild and a, and, and a crazy journey. But, you know, here we are, you know, about a week out and, you know, life could be completely different here here in a, in a short amount of time. So and I know you value your time over at East Tennessee State, and we've seen that with South Carolina players, especially over the last couple of years. They transfer in from a smaller school and they have the opportunity to go play at the NFL. But. What can you say about your time at USC and how valuable do you think it was to be able to get you to this point? And now obviously having that that opportunity to play at that next level. Yeah, I think it's been huge. Um, you know, I think a lot of like during this process, talking to teams, you know, a lot of people are just talking about this past year at USC. You know, a lot of people, you know, they they think, you know, playing at ETSU was, was great. And, and they think I played great there. But, you know, they were only looking at this past season of work at the highest level at, you know, here at South Carolina and in, in, in the SEC. So, you know, I think it's been, you know, the biggest advantage for me going in to this whole process was, was grad transferring here and, and playing at the highest level and, and playing pretty successfully throughout the whole year um, at the, you know, at the highest level of competition. Um, you know, if I were, at, were to stay at ETSU and, and have another good season, who knows if this opportunity would have been here, I'm sure, you know, it would have been a little bit different, you know, maybe a little less scouts or a, a little less interviews mm -hmm. here and there. But, you know, it, it. I think playing here at South Carolina, you know, and in Columbia has been, you know, the biggest help for me throughout this journey. Outside of the obvious, which is you're going up against, like you said, you're going against the best competition. You're in the best conference in the country and you're able to put tape out there for scouts to be able to watch and say, all right, this kid's going up against Georgia. This kid's going up against Tennessee. Outside of that, what are some things that you feel like helped elevate your game this year to be able to put you in the position that you are in heading into this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I think it. I think it's like you said, uh, you know, kind of day in, day out, just going up against great competition. Um, you know, I just got off the phone with somebody saying, "What was the biggest? What was the biggest transition or, or the toughest thing to you know your transition from ETSU to South Carolina?" And I said the same thing. I was like, you know. At ETSU, you know, at FCS level, there's there's great football and great players, but you know, it's not the SEC, and you're not playing against you know these five stars, these these bigger, faster, stronger guys than you, you know, every single rep, and uh, you know, it just takes that that little bit more focus, you know, that that little bit more of you know perfecting your craft, perfecting your technique day in day out, so you can you know go out and compete and do really well against these great players, not only here at South Carolina and in, and in practice, but you know against the entire SEC and, and all the great competition that's in it. So, yes, sir. I think something that's really neat with you from a Gamecock standpoint, and it happens, and I think you take it the right way, a lot of people want to compare you to Pat DeMarco just because yeah. South Carolina's like, oh, we remember when Pat was here, and I'm sure you heard a lot about it towards the end of your career at South Carolina. Have you had opportunity had, had an opportunity or two to be able to talk to Pat? And if so, what are some of the things he's been able to – kind of either help you with or at least, you know, looking forward to some advice he may have given you? Yeah, I mean, you know, training here at Columbia, here at South Carolina at the facility, I, you know, I get to I get the chance to kind of see him every single day, um, you know, whenever he's there or if I, you know, catch a good time to to talk with him or sometimes he'll even join in in our workouts and, and work out with us, which is really cool. Um, 
but you you know pat has been he's been great during this process uh you know every time you know he talks it's it's usually important information and valuable information so it's kind of a deal where you know when he talks everybody's kind of listening because you know what he has to say is probably pretty important and, and can help me especially during my process because you know we were kind of in similar boats um as far as position and just you know where where you might go during the draft and all that so you know, every, you know, he, he'll talk to me and, and just be like, you know, just enjoy the process. You know, don't don't take it too hard on yourself. Whatever happens, happens. You know, if you get drafted, that's awesome. But if not, you know, don't think it's the end of the world because all you need is an opportunity. And, you know, a player like me um, can, you know, go in, put his head down and work and, and find a way in this league. So, yes, sir. What's that like, though? Because, again, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it feels like, you know, because I know you're a humble guy you know, being able to get to know your dad over the last couple of years as well. I think some people, they get so caught up when people want to compare them to other players and they don't look at it from a positive standpoint, which is like, Hey, look, you're going to go out, you're going to make your own name. You're going to make your own story, but mm -hmm. especially from a game cock connection, being able to be compared to someone like Pat. And I'm sure you've been able to get to learn more about Pat during your time at South Carolina and what he meant at USC and obviously in the NFL, but how neat is that though, to be compared to a player like him? I mean, Pat was one of the best fullbacks in the league at one time. So, I mean, if I'm getting compared to him, that's, that's freaking that biggest compliment you can give to somebody like me that, you know, didn't even think this opportunity would come from playing here this year, to be honest with you. So having that comparison and, and having that love from, you know, the Gamecock community here at South Carolina has been, you know, it's, it's super awesome. But like you said, you know, I want to, I want to try to, you know, create my own journey and, uh, you know, try to try to make a name for myself and, you know, wh whichever way it happens and whichever way the opportunity presents itself. We knew the blocking was there. We knew the special teams play was there. Was the hands, were they always there? Or was it one of those things that it just, you need an opportunity to be able to show them off a little bit? What, what is it? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I've always been able to catch the ball pretty well. Um, kind of just relying on, you know, just athletic ability, just see the ball, catch the ball and, and try to get upfield. I'm never really trying to do anything crafty with the ball in my hands. I'm just trying to catch it and get upfield, try to get first down and help the team as, as much as I can. But, you know, I think uh, towards the end of the season, you know, we had a lot of tendencies of when I'm in the game, it's going to be a run or he's going to block. It's going to be a play action pass. Um, so, you know, I think towards the end of the year, uh, they wanted to start breaking tendencies and, and getting me involved in the pass game. And, uh, you know, I think that's ultimately what, you know, helped me propel me into this situation that I'm in now here and could uh, be on a team here soon. So we've talked to some of your other teammates that are going through this process. They've shared some of the teams. You don't have to if you don't want to. But if you do, you know, who are some of those teams you've had conversations with? Yeah, I've had uh, conversations with plenty of them. Um, you know, I think I, I went on a visit to Denver, which was pretty cool. Uh, this this past week and that that was been my only visit but you know I think that kind of just stood out because that's been the only team that has you know invited me out to to go on a visit so Denver was pretty cool getting to meet a lot of all all the important people in that organization which is pretty awesome um, you know during this whole process it, that's probably been the biggest or the craziest part about it is you know you, you always have the phone next to you and and you never really know who you're going to talk to uh, whenever it rings you know you answer the phone it might be a just a scout or it might be the GM of a team. You never know. So I think that's been a, it's been a cool thing, but you know, I've, I've talked to a, quite a bit of teams, um, but you know, Denver stands out to me because, you know, it's my only visit and, you know, they showed me a lot of love. So. What is that like having your father, not obviously, not only as a coach, right? I mean, we've talked about it before being coaches, sons, both of us and the neat opportunity you have with that. But the fact that he's coached in the NFL, I know he's probably, you know, been as hands off as possible, mm -hmm. but being able to have that outlet at your disposal, if you want any questions, you know, you can ask him a question. And I know you have tremendous resources at the University of South Carolina, but being able to have your dad there along the way for this journey. Yeah, it's been you know, one of the biggest blessings during this is just having him, you know, right down the road. You know, he's every single time I go into workout, he's always texting me what time am I working out? So, you know, he can kind of, you know, just come in and talk to me and, and just see what I'm doing and, and what I'm all about. So it's like, it's been a really cool process. Um, you know, he's been helping me any way I can or any way he can, you know, just talking to me, you know, you know, measuring things out, uh, giving me advice from his time in the NFL and, and what kind of like, you know, rookie mini camp entails, 
um, you know, kind of how, uh, you know, NFL teams go about this whole process of, you know, the draft and, you know, if you don't get drafted, the undrafted process and how that works. So, you know, he's been, you know, super helpful as, as well as a lot of other people in the building. You know, I've, I can't thank, you know, every single person that has, you know, been helping me throughout this whole thing because it's been a whole group effort with with all the South Carolina staff and you know them letting me you know be there at the facility kind of just treating me as if I am still a player there you know it's been super super I'm super grateful for it and uh, super blessed so yes sir and I'm sure you've done this a little bit already with some of the teams that you have you've talked with before I know you mentioned going out to Denver but if you had to do the quick elevator pitch you know what is a team getting? What do you bring to the table if they bring you on in and give you a shot at playing in the NFL? Yeah, you're going to get a guy that's, you know, one, dependable, uh, accountable, um, smart, tough, all the things that you want in a position of like me, you know, a fullback, H-back, versatile type guy. Um, you know, I'm going to come in. I'm going to be a sponge. I'm going to soak in. Um, all the, you know, the coaching that I get, all the advice that I get from the players that are already on that roster. Um, you know, I'm going to come in and, and put my head down and work. You know, you're not going to have to worry about, oh, is this guy um, going to be late in the building? Oh, is this guy going to, you know, mess up here? Oh, gosh, Nate, he's lined up wrong. You're not going to have to worry about that with me. You're going to, you know, you're going to get a guy that comes in and, and works his butt off just trying to make an opportunity for myself and, you know, and, and try to help a team win. I asked this to Nick Muse last year, and we've heard so much already about guys even like Jalen Brooks and even Darius Rush. How much being able to play in Pete Lumbo's system on special teams, how much that's helped the stock continue to go up as someone that came from one school. And it's not to bash your old school because, I mean, Pete Lumbo is the national special teams coach of the year for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. What is it about playing in that system and how much do you think that will help you in terms of an NFL team wanting to give you a shot because you also have played for a very good special teams coach. Yeah. I think that's everything for a guy like me. Um, you know, I play punt and kickoff return for most of the year. Um, you know, and, and that's what basically all the teams that I've talked to have been saying, you know, is, you know, you can't get enough of the tight end linebacker type bodies to play all four special teams in the NFL or even in college. You know, those are some of the most valuable bodies on special teams that there are. You know, those those taller and thicker kind of guys that can still run and can still block and all those things. Um, Coach Limbo has told me that the entire or that's kind of his philosophy is, you know, you can never have that many or too many of those kind of bodies. So. You know, I think uh, playing playing uh, under him and, and Coach Limbo and teaching me, you know, all the ins and outs of, you know, a, a successful um, special teams player has been super beneficial in, in my whole process. And, and like I said, you know, that's what a lot of people at the NFL level that I've talked to have said is, you know, that's your key. You know, you, you got to play all four phases and you got to play them well. And then, you know, you're going to find your way on offense because, you know, that's what you do. That's what you, you know, do day in, day out is play offense. But, you know, those those four phases of special teams is, is going to be your ticket to, you know, making a roster. So last thing for you, Nate, and you've mentioned it a year ago, you're in a situation where you're thinking, all right, I'm coming to South Carolina, great opportunity. A really neat opportunity to play for my father as well. Could be my last time ever putting on pads. Now you're in the situation that you're in right now. What will it mean to you this weekend, whether it's drafted, whether it's signing as an undrafted free agent, what will it mean to you to get that phone call this weekend? Uh, it would mean everything. I mean, it's, it's all the, it's accumulation of all the hard work that I've put in. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, a guy that, came out of high school with basically one offer at ETSU, uh, went on a visit there and they offered me and I basically committed right away. Um, you know, basically saying, you know, I would regret it if I didn't try it. Um, I was, I was just going to go be a student at a probably university of Tennessee and, and, and be you know, friends with all my friends from high school, just be, you know, be the normal student. And, uh, you know, ETSU took a chance on me and, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I would regret it if I didn't try it and, you know, played well there for four years and, you know, kind of kind of earned this opportunity to come here and play at South Carolina. And, you know, I'm forever grateful for all the people that have helped me. And, you know, like I said, it's just accumulation of, of all the hard work that I've put in and, you know, just putting my head down and showing up day in, day out, being a consistent guy and a consistent player. And, you know, if if 
you know, if I'm on a team here in about a week, it, it would be, you know, the, the best feeling in the world. So you, you mentioned grateful, Nate. I'm sure there's a lot of people in Co Columbia who are very grateful. You came to South Carolina, especially after making that catch against Clemson and that picture will probably be in bars and restaurants for years to come. Nate, best of luck to you this weekend. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Go Gamecocks.